So we've seen how to do a linear approximation to a function from many variables into one variable, and now we're going to figure out how to do it from many variables into many variables. And of course we're going to start off with a nice simple example to get us going where we need to go. So Q is a demand vector dependent upon a price 1 and a price 2 of good 1 and good 2. And we're going to say it's P1 to 3 fourths, P2 1 fourth, and the second entry is going to be p1 to the 3 halves, p2 to the negative 1 half. So this is the demand, uh, and uh, we can split this into two demand functions. So we've got q1 of p1, p2 is equal to, well, these should be negatives, sorry, these should be negatives. So we've got q1, p1, p2 as equal to p1, negative 3 fourths, p2, negative 1 fourth, and q2 is equal to q2 of p1, p2 is equal to p1 to the negative 3 halves, p2 to the negative 1 half, and we're going to look at the point p1 is equal to p2 is equal to 1. So at P1 is equal to P2 is equal to 1. Uh, we want a linear approximation to both of these functions simultaneously. And so we're going to set P Q1 of P1 plus delta P1 and P2 plus delta P2. Well, that's going to be approximately Q of 1, 1 plus dq1 of dp1 of 1, 1, delta p1 plus partial of q1 with respect to p2 now, the second entry, evaluated at 1, 1, delta p2. And when we plug in numbers and calculate these, these things, we're going to get 1 minus 3 fourths delta P1 minus one-fourth delta P2. Similarly for Q2 of P1 plus delta P1, we can go through all, all these calculations. What do we get? Well, for this one, we're going to get 1 minus 3 halves delta P1 minus one-half delta P2. Now this is all nice, but it's easier to represent this in terms of a nice matrix equation. So we can code this with Q of P1 plus delta P1 all right, and this is approximation, right? P2 plus delta P2 is approximately vector 1, 1. Those are the constant entries. And then plus this matrix that I obtained by the quantities that we're multiplying our P1, delta P1 and delta P2 by. So this will be negative 3 fourths minus 1 fourth, negative 3 halves, negative one-half, and this will multiply my change vector, delta P1, delta P2. So that's a nice tight encoding. And in general, what this actually looks like, right, if we, if we put this into more general format instead of putting in actual numbers, This is equal to Q, or it's approximated by Q of P1, P2, plus this matrix, which is D, Q1, D, P1, of P1, P2, D, Q1, D, P2, of P1, P2, D, 
Q2 now of DP1, P1, P2. D Q2, DP2 of P1, P2, multiplied by the differential vector. So that's a very nice encoding of this linear approximation. And so this matrix is actually extremely important because it tells us exactly how to do that linear approximation. So this has a very special special place in, in all of this, and we call it the Jacobian. So suppose f from Rn into Rm has all partial derivatives then the Jacobian of F at X star is let me write DF X star so this is this is probably the thing that you would most likely say is the derivative of this function. And it's this matrix where I take df dx1 of x star df dx2 of x star all the way up to df dx in x star df well this is these should all be f1s f1 f1 so the first entry f2 dx2 of x star df2 oh this is 1 x2 of x star all the way up to df2 of d x n of x star and this continues on until we get to the final variable or the final uh, function coordinate function dfm dx1 of x star all the way up to dfm over d xn of x star. And this friendly fellow is called the Jacobian. And why is this useful? Because we can write a linear approximation for any of these functions f of x star plus dx is approximately f of x star plus the Jacobian d f at x star this matrix times dx so it's a matrix multiplied by this and that gives me the exact linear approximation to this function from many variables into many variables